This is a five-year-old Motorola phone running Google Pixel, no root, no PC, and yes, it runs smoother than the stock Motorola ROM. What you're seeing here is not a custom ROM made for one device. This is a generic system, and it can be installed on phones from almost any brand. In this video, I'll show you how Pixel OS performs on real hardware, whether it's actually stable enough for daily use, and finally, how you can install it on your own phone without using a computer. Before jumping into the installation, let's talk about performance. I installed multiple games, ran benchmark tests, and the results honestly surprised me. What you're looking at here is a GSI ROM. If you don't know what GSI means, it stands for Generic System Image. In simple terms, it's a full Android operating system. That can run on most Android phones released after Android 11. Think of it like this. Windows can be installed on almost any PC hardware. In a similar way, a GSI can be installed on many Android phones, regardless of brand. They rely on the phone's vendor layer for hardware support. That's why they work across multiple devices. They also include a system updater, so you receive Android updates just like on a normal ROM. To test performance, I ran Geekbench 6 and Antu 2 on this device. In Geekbench 6, the GSI actually scores higher than Motorola's official ROM. And in Antu 2, for some reason, I'm seeing nearly a 50% increase compared to stock Moto software. I also tested Asphalt 9, and the gameplay was smooth with no visible stutters, glitches, or lag. Based on my testing, this ROM is stable, smooth, and powerful enough to be used as a daily driver. Now let's move to the installation process. And yes, this works without a PC. First, install an app called Treble Info from the Play Store. Open the app, and if it shows that your device supports Project Treble, you're good to go. The next part is very important. In this tutorial, I'm using a Motorola phone running Android 12, and my bootloader is already unlocked. To install any GSI ROM, your bootloader must be unlocked. I already have detailed videos on my channel showing how to unlock bootloaders on Moto, Samsung, Nothing, Xiaomi, Pixel, and OnePlus devices. Follow those guides first and only then continue. After unlocking the bootloader, open the Treble Info app again. On the home screen, tap on Browse Images. This will take you to a GitHub repository, where you'll find multiple GSI ROMs for Android 16, Android 15, and older versions. You'll also see popular options like Evolution X and Lineage OS. For this video, we're using Pixel Experience GSI. There are two Pixel GSI options, Pixel OS and Pixel Experience Plus, and we're choosing Pixel Experience Plus. Now here's where many people get confused. The GSI file name tells you everything you need to know. First, almost all modern phones require ARM64 architecture and AB partition support. Next, choose your variant. Select GAPS if you want the Play Store pre-installed, or Vanilla if you want a clean system without Google Apps. Most importantly, look for the VND tag. This gives the best performance on modern devices. Avoid VNDK Lite or slim versions, unless you're facing specific bugs or storage limitations. Also make sure the Android version matches your firmware. For this setup, we're using BGS, where B means the device supports AB partitions, G means Google Apps are included, S means it supports AVB and works with the stock vendor. After downloading the GSI, we also need the firmware for our phone to extract the VB meta file. Firmware files are easily available online. Motorola firmware can be found on Lolanet OnePlus on firmware files and Samsung on SamFW. Now here's how we do everything without a PC. We'll use another Android phone as the host device. Transfer the downloaded GSI archive and VB meta to the secondary phone and extract it. As you can see, I've extracted both the GSI image and the VB meta file. Now connect both phones using a Type-C to Type-C cable. Next, install an app called Bugjeager from the Play Store. Open Bugjeager and switch to the Fastboot tab. Make sure USB is hosted by the phone, where Bugjeager is installed. If the app doesn't detect your phone, reconnect the cable on both ends. Once connected, grant USB and debugging permissions. Now tap Reboot Fastboot Mode in Bugjeager. If the phone boots normally instead, use the Reboot Bootloader option. 
Once your device enters fast boot mode, tap the floating shell icon in Bugjeeger. This opens the terminal. First, type fast boot erase user data. Next, flash VB meta using the exact same command I am using. By attaching the VB meta image file and executing the command. After VB meta is flashed, we move on to the GSI type fastboot flash system and attach the GSI image file. Once the file loads, tap the arrow button to begin flashing. At this stage, you might encounter an error saying, there isn't enough space to resize the system partition. Don't panic. This is very common on devices using dynamic partitions. Your phone has a large container called the super partition. Inside it are multiple logical partitions, such as product, system underscore ext, and ODM. GS, I only need the system partition. The others are used by stock ROM features, so we temporarily remove these extra partitions to free space. This does not erase internal storage. It does not touch IMEI data, and it does not damage hardware. It only reallocates space. First, delete the product partition, then try flashing the system again. If the error still appears, delete system underscore XT. And if needed, delete ODM as well. These partitions are safe to remove for GSI and will be recreated automatically when you return to stock firmware. Once the system image flashes successfully, run fast boot erase user data one more time. Then type fast boot reboot. Unplug the device and let it reboot. The first boot into a GS I usually takes less than 10 minutes. As you can see that the device has booted successfully into Pixel Experience GSI. That's it for the installation. Before you try this yourself, there are a few important warnings. This is not beginner friendly. Always back up your data before flashing anything. While in fast boot mode, run fast boot get var all using Bugjeeger and save the output. This includes critical device information. Also, check if a custom ROM exists for your phone. If it does, a custom ROM is usually safer than a GSI. Finally, watch unbrick or recovery videos for your specific device so you know what to do if something goes wrong. That's all for this video. If this video saved you time or helped you understand GS is better, consider subscribing. I make content that goes beyond basic tutorials, real testing, real results, and no hype. If you're into Android internals, custom ROMs, and pushing hardware beyond what brands allow, you'll feel at home here. Drop a comment if you want me to test GSI on other devices or break down advanced topics in future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.